What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to implement a simple Forex trading bot in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to implement a simple Forex trading bot in Python today. So a trading bot that trades currencies on the foreign exchange market. And for this, we're going to implement a basic SMA crossover strategy. So a quite simple one, we have a short window and a long window that we're looking at. And when the two SMAs cross, uh, depending on how they cross, we either buy or sell. That's the basic strategy. Now, of course, you can adjust this to be whatever you want. You can use different indicators, different metrics, different thresholds, whatever you want to do. You can implement your own strategy however you like. And also you can use whatever platform you like, because in this video today, I'm going to simulate the trading by keeping track of the balance, just because I don't want to focus on one single API on one single platform, because usually you have different uh, endpoints, different definitions of how to pass certain things. Maybe you even have a Python package for the platform. So what you want to do with this video is you want to get the logic out of it, and then you want to adjust it to be compatible with your platform that you're using. Most platforms have an API that you can use. And the only thing that you want to change in this code is you want to change how you get the data because I'm going to get the data from the Yahoo Finance API, you want to probably get the data from your broker or from or from your platform. And uh, you also want to change, of course, how you buy and sell, you want to actually place an order using a request, I'm going to simulate an order here, but the rest is going to be the same. So we're going to start by opening up a terminal and installing a couple of packages. As I said, I'm going to use the Yahoo Finance data. So I'm going to use the Y finance package, you want to use either if you want to build the exact same uh, tool that I'm building, you, you can also use the Yahoo Finance API, or you use the package off your broker off your platform. Uh, and actually, that's it, we don't need a couple of packages, we only need that. Um, and then we can start with the imports, we're going to import time, uh, we're going to import date time as DT, these are core Python packages, and I'm going to import Y finance S Y F. So as I said, we're going to implement a simple uh, SMA crossover strategy. So we're going to have a short window of 20. Now we're going to do uh, minute by minute trading. So we're going to have data that um, is per minute. So the interval of the data is uh, a minute, meaning we get a new data point every minute and not every day. So this is actually not a 20 day simple moving average, it's a 20 minute simple moving average. And for the long window, we're going to use 50. So we're going to say long window equals 50 short window equals 20. We're also going to define an initial balance of 10,000 USD. So this is USD. Um, I'm also going to set balance equal to initial balance because the initial balance is what we're going to use to calculate the profit or the loss and the balance is going to change all the time. Uh, and then we also want to have a position which is going to be zero of whatever currency we're trading, I'm going to use euro in this video today. So we have zero euros, we have 10,000 USD. And what we're trading is the following forex pair. The forex pair we're trading is euro USD equals x. This is the, the symbol that we use for the Yahoo Finance API here. Um, then we want to do the following We want to have a try except structure. And we want to catch a keyboard interrupt. So if a keyboard interrupt happens, this is basically the user ending, um, ending the script ending the tra a trading bot, stopping it. And here we want to have a while true loop. So uh, an endless loop, basically. And with each iteration, what we're going to do is we're going to say get the data from the Yahoo Finance API. So from YF download uh, the Forex pair, we want to get a period of one day. And we want to get an interval of one minute. And we don't want to display a progress bar so that we don't have too much output. So this is getting the data, then we need to calculate the SMA. So we're going to say, SMA short is going to be equal to data close. So taking the close price rolling, defining a window of short window size, um, and calculating the mean based on that. Now to get some values also for the first couple of entries, we're going to say that the minimum number of periods is going to be equal to one. Um, 
actually doesn't really matter because we're only going to, to use the last data points. But nevertheless, we're going to keep it like that. SMA long is going to be equal to close rolling window is going to be the long window. What this means is we're just looking at the last 20 minutes or the last 50 minutes and we're taking the mean closing price of this time period. That is the SMA. Um, and then we're going to get the latest entry of the data. So it's going to be data location negative one. So I lock negative one. Uh, to get the last row of the data frame. And then we're going to apply our simple crossover strategy. So it's going to be if the latest entry, uh, the, the short SMA, so the 20 day SMA or uh, 20 minute SMA uh, goes above the long term SMA, or the 50 minute SMA, if that happens, um, this is considered a buy signal. But it's only considered a buy signal if we don't already have um, a position. So we're going to say and position equals zero, or you can adjust this to be if you have enough funds to buy something. Um, so we're saying, okay, if I don't have a position yet, and the short is above the long, I want to buy as much as I can. Now, how much can I buy, I can calculate this, I can say, Oh, what did I do now? There you go. Uh, units to buy. So how many units can I buy? Obviously, I can buy as many units uh, as balanced floor divided by uh, by the price. So by the current um, the current price for euro. So how many dollars do I have to pay for one euro? This is what I get by looking at the close price of the latest row. Now, of course, if you have transaction cost, you need to factor this in. You need to say, okay, I need to consider that I still have to. Uh, remove the transaction cost. So balance minus transaction cost, how much is left divided by the close price. Um, but we're going to just do it now without transaction cost. So uh, units to buy is equal to balance floor division by closing price. And then we're going to say that the balance is going to be updated uh, to be less now. So units to buy times latest entry uh, close is how many USD we have to spend and the position is then going to give us is then going to be increased by the units to buy. So we now have x euros more and we have uh, x euros times the price of a euro in USD less in the balance. So this is how we do that. Again, to make this clear, this is just simulating it now in a Python script. What you actually want to do is instead of downloading from the Yahoo Finance API, you want to download the data from your broker. So whatever platform you're using, there are a bunch of platforms out there, go to your broker, Google your broker name API or package or something like this automation, Python, something like this, and see how you connect to your broker, set up an API key, set up credentials or something, connect to your broker, get the data from your broker, um, somehow get the closing price, turn it into a data frame, uh, calculate the SMAs and or whatever strategy you want to apply. And then here, instead of doing this and keeping track of the balance and position, what you want to do is you want to place a buy order. So usually you want to use the package dot something like buy, uh, or you want to have the request package and send a call to the API, you want to perform the order here. Now I need to mention here, by the way, I forgot to mention this in the beginning, none of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial professional. I'm just showing you how to implement the strategy here. Uh, I'm not responsible for any decisions you make with this. I'm not saying that this will result in you making profit. This is just me showing you how to implement a very basic and you could say stupid strategy. Don't expect to make money with this. If it was that easy, everyone would be doing it. I'm just showing you how to put it into code. So none of this is financial advice. I need to always say that to make sure I don't get uh, sued by people. So what we want to print in this case is we want to print that we're buying. So we want to print a timestamp DT date time dot now. And I want to say bought units to buy euro at uh, latest entry, closing price up to two decimal places, uh, USD, or let's say four. Uh, and we need to use double quotations here. And maybe we should say per unit. All right, so that is the buy signal. Now we also want to have a sell signal, which is the opposite. If the SMA short 
goes below or is below the SMA long. And we do actually have a position. So and position is more than one. What we want to do is we want to sell all the euros that we have. This is very basic, but we can also back test the strategy to see if it works or if it would have worked in the past. Again, no guarantee that, that it will work in the future if it does, or if it did work in the past. Uh, but what we want to do here is we want to say the balance is going to be increased by position times the price. So we're selling all the euros getting USDs back. So we increase the balance by the position times the price, uh, which is latest entry close. Um, and we want to print here that we're selling. So we sold position euro for uh, yeah, the unit, this is fine. And then position will be set to zero afterwards. All right, and if nothing else happens, we just uh, continue. And every time we want to do time sleep 60. So we want to wait for a minute before loading a new data point. Um, and oftentimes with the Yahoo Finance API, it doesn't take exactly one minute. So sometimes you might have the same data point for two or three minutes. Uh, but that's what we're going to do here. Now you can of course adjust this if you want to do day to day trading and not minute by minute trading. But uh, I'm going to do it like this. And here we want to say now if a keyboard interrupt happens, we want to say trading bot stopped by user. And then in the end, what we want to do is we want to get the profit or the final balance. So we're going to say final balance is going to be equal um, to the balance that we have plus position times uh, the latest entry close. Now it says it might not be defined here, it will be defined usually. So I'm just going to ignore this warning here. Uh, and I'm going to print that the final balance is the final balance. And this is in USD. Now, if the final balance is above the initial balance that we still have as 10,000, uh, we're going to print that the balance was increased by and here we're going to do the calculation, which is going to be final balance uh, divided by initial balance. So it's going to be since final balance is above initial balance, it's going to be a number above one, uh, we want to subtract one from it to get just the increase, um, or just increase. And then we want to say times 100 to make it a percentage up to two decimal places and percent. Otherwise, if the final balance is now less than the initial balance, we want to say that the balance was decreased by and for this now we want to say one minus so we want to say one minus final balance divided by initial balance, uh, because it's the other way around. And otherwise, if nothing has happened, then we're going to say balance did not change. So I can run this now. And if I didn't make any mistakes, this should um, or actually, I forgot one thing, which is not mandatory, but it's nice to see it. As uh, so we can say else and I can say just copy this here and say holding. Yeah, maybe at instead of four, just so we see that it's not always doing something. So holding zero euro at 110 USD per unit. And this is now going to refresh every uh, every 60 seconds so or every minute. And sometimes we're going to have a price change. Sometimes it's going to be a crossover. So we're going to buy and sell. Uh, but I don't want to run this now and wait with you guys for something to happen. What we want to do here, this is the trading bot itself. Again, just to summarize it here, you would make a sell call here, you would make a buy call to your broker here, you would get the price, everything else stays the same. Um, and this is the simulation now. Now let's see how this strategy would have performed in the past. So this is called back testing, we're doing, uh, we're testing how the strategy would have worked applied to the past data. So back testing is going to be my script here. And I'm actually going to just copy paste all this, I'm going to slightly change this. Uh, because what we want to do now is we want to, uh, we want to actually instead of 
doing it in a while true loop here with a try except structure, we want to iterate over the past data frame. So I'm gonna uh, indent this back, we're still gonna get to data, we're still going to calculate the SMA. Uh, we're still going to get or actually we're not going to get the latest entry because what we're going to do is we're going to say for index and row in data iteros. So we're going to do through the individual time points. And now we're going to basically instead of using the latest entry, we're going to do it for each row. So each row is considered the latest entry at the specific time. So we're going to say if the row SMA short is above the row SMA long, then I want to calculate how many units to buy by looking at the current close price at this row uh, and doing the same thing, basically. So we're replacing latest entry by row. Let me just do that here with a simple Vim substitution latest entry will be come on, replaced by row. Uh, down here as well. Rope. And uh, that should actually be the same then. So now instead of doing it just for the latest entry, we're doing it for all the rows, we're updating the balance and the position, we don't need a time sleep here, we can still calculate the final balance. And I think that should actually be it for the back testing. So I can run this. And there you go, you see what's happening at every minute. So you can see holding, 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 holding. Oh, there we bought, holding, 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 sold, holding, holding, bought, holding, 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 sold, and so on, bought, and so on and so forth it happens a couple of times. And in the end, we have a final uh, balance of $10,003. Dollars probably with transaction costs, we would have not made money. Uh, but here now we can see we have an increase by 0.03%, which is not a lot. So let's maybe go ahead and see what happens if I change the time frame. So I'm not sure if I can do two days. Can I do two days? I think so. Uh, row is not defined. Did you mean? Okay, no, okay, I can do five days. Five days is okay. There you go. If I do this for five days, I make 51 bucks. So I have a 0.52% increase. Uh, and of course, if your API, if your broker allows you to look at a long time frame, you can do that. Let me just see what was the suggestion if I go with something invalid. Uh, one month, I don't think that I will get a one minute interval data for one month, I think it's not going to be present. Yeah, it doesn't work here. Um, but yeah, you can only look at the last seven days when you use the Yahoo Finance API, but you can go with a five day uh, period here. And yeah, you can back test your strategy, you can use a different strategy, you can only back test it on uh, seven days. Uh, but you can see in this case, I would have made a little bit of money, maybe considering the transaction cost not because it's usually you have uh, a transaction cost of, I think at least a couple of dollars, I'm not sure about it. I'm not doing forex trading, I'm only trading stocks myself. So I don't know what the transaction cost is usually but this is something you might want to consider here. So what you would do for that is as I said, when considering how many units you can buy, you consider also the transaction cost here before dividing the balance and um, when selling as well, obviously, so you need to make sure that uh, you subtract from the balance here also the transaction cost. But yeah, this is how you can implement and backtest a simple forex trading strategy in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.